You can learn a lot about a man's beliefs by asking him, what is best in life? Once upon a time, a general said to his warriors, what is best in life? The open steppe, three tours, falcons at your wrist, and the wind in your hair. The open steppe, a fleet horse, falcons at your wrist, and the wind in your hair. Sounds like a nature lover. The general was not a nature lover, so he replied, Wrong! Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. That is good. To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentations of their women, spoken like a true barbarian. Notice that we now know all kinds of things about these men just by hearing their answers to the question, what is best in life? For historical figures like Jesus, Paul, and Muhammad, we can often figure out their answers to the question, what is best in life, by examining their teachings and seeing how they talked about what's best or most important. Let's start with Muhammad. What did Muhammad think was best in life? Sahih al-Bukhari. 2785. A man came to Allah's messenger and said, Guide me to such a deed as equals jihad in reward. He replied, I do not find such a deed. There is no deed greater than jihad. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2795. The Prophet said, Nobody who dies and finds good from Allah in the hereafter would wish to come back to this world, even if he were given the whole world and whatever is in it except the martyr, who, on seeing the superiority of martyrdom, would like to come back to the world and get killed again in Allah's cause. Once you get to paradise, there's nothing in the world that you'd want to come back for except getting killed for Allah while waging jihad. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2796. The Prophet said, a single endeavor of fighting in Allah's cause in the afternoon or in the forenoon is better than all the world and whatever is in it. How can Muhammad make this any clearer? Waging jihad isn't just better than this or that, it's better than the entire world. So, Muhammad, what is best in life? Muhammad's response is, dying for Allah while slaughtering unbelievers. Similar to Conan's response, but with a religious twist. What happens when we ask Jesus the same question? Well, Jesus was never asked what is best in life, but he was asked a similar question. In Mark 12, one of the scribes asks Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? There are commandments about every aspect of life, but what's the best commandment? Jesus answers, the foremost is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The greatest commandments, according to Jesus, are to love God and to love your neighbor. So, Jesus, what is best in life? Jesus' response is, loving God and loving others. What about the Apostle Paul? We have Paul's answer to the question, what is best in life, in 1 Corinthians 13. The chapter is short, so I'll read it to you. Paul writes, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned 
like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. According to the Apostle Paul, what's the greatest thing in the world? Love. So, we've seen five answers to the question, what is best in life? The Catan warrior, the open step, a fleet horse, falcons at your wrist, and the wind in your hair. Wrong! Conan the Barbarian, crushing your enemies, seeing them driven before you, and hearing the lamentations of their women. Wrong! Muhammad, dying while slaughtering unbelievers in the name of Allah. Wrong! Jesus, loving God and loving your neighbor. This is good. Paul, love. This is good. Now, we don't need to worry about the Catan warrior or Conan because they're fictional and don't have any followers. But roughly half the world's population believes in some combination of Muhammad, Jesus, and Paul. And when millions of people take someone as a pattern of conduct, that person's values become extremely important because the values affect you, whether you take the person as a pattern of conduct or not. In other words, Muhammad's belief that dying for Allah is the greatest of deeds affects you whether you believe in Muhammad or not. At the very least, it affects you through his followers. Likewise, the emphasis on love we find in the New Testament affects you whether you're Christian or not. You can complain about Jesus and Paul all you want, but you've already absorbed some of their values because their values have permeated society. They also keep people like me from agreeing with people like Conan. So, what do you think is best in life? Do you Muslims agree with your prophet, or do you agree with Jesus? You Christians who are required to agree with Jesus and Paul, have you really absorbed what they said about love? What about you atheists? Do you agree with any of the answers we've considered? Even more important, can you defend your answer without appealing to your feelings? Let me know in the comments section.